Welcome everybody to the Ground Board, January 10th, 2023. My name is Mike Aitken, I'm Hey, Council, how are you? Good. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, brother. Happy New Year. Uh, this is my Vice Chair, Mr. Ray Dell. Board members, Mr. Himmel, Mr. Frankel, Mr. O'Brien. Our clerk, Mrs. Newman. And the acting director is Mr. Conlon behind me for inspectional service. Mr. Duke was retiring in another week or so. Uh, we have one thing we got to do there first. Uh, first of all, if you got a page or a cell phone, please put it on silent and vibrate, not take for up the meeting. If you have to speak, please go outside. It's hard enough to hear here as it is. If anyone's going to testify tonight, could you please stand up or raise your right hand? Anyone going to testify? If you think you might testify, you have to take an oath. If you don't, you will not speak. We have six, three, seven, four, eight, ten. Anyone else? Uh, Mr. Franco, give an oath, please. Raise your right hand if you can testify. You will swear that anything that you say before the board today will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so God. I do. I do. Yeah, I'm not going to say that. 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 I'm not Wayne's great five and eleven years after they're coming forward. Vice Chair Chair Dessie, so here we go. ZBA 2285, Robin Benitez for a variance finding to demolish existing structures on multiple product activities and construction 46 in a residential building on the premises number 1234 and 1244 Parkway and 211 and 217 Copeland Street, Quincy. I make a motion to move that to January 24th. Second. On the motion, say none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. Back to you, Mike. Whole business. Oh yeah, you just take about very stolen. Look at that. Keep <laughs> that in. First case, no business. Ronald Simoretti. Come on. Mary, then Maria. I don't know his name, but uh, a special permit for to erect a sign on the premises 541 Washington Street. The applicant here. Just a second. Oh, you got here. Come on up, please. Name and address for the record. Hi, my name is Arlo Samari. I'm the of Arlo Samari. What happened last week? Uh, last night, my dad was here, but he doesn't speak very good English. So. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, why don't you tell us what you want to do? Yeah, uh, we basically just want to set up this sandwich sign board. Um, it doesn't obstruct the sidewalk or the entrance to the parking. It's located at 541 Washington Street, like you said. What's the sign? The sign, see? I'm not sure, but I have pictures here that I can show you for a second. Sure, very important. So just the exterior on the... The folding side? The folding side? Yeah, just the folding side. On the screen? Yeah, by the windows. So is it temporary? Is it removable? Yeah, we take it in every night. <clears throat> Nope. Yeah. <laughs> Anyone have any questions? Anyone have any questions? No, I thought you were on the roof. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're going to sign up. Thank you. Can have a seat. Thank you. Does anyone want to speak in favor of this? First call. Second call. Here go. Oh, anything corresponds to nothing in here. Uh, no. Anyone opposed when decided? First call? Second call. Third call, opposed. I, I, I need both to put a sign on the sidewalk. 
Uh, what's, what's the nature of the business? Um, CBD Clean Fantasy. Okay. Yeah, so, is there no exterior sign on the building? No, they, they, they want to put a full sign. No, no, I know, but is there no exterior sign on the building? Uh, a couple on the yeah. yeah. I mean, we'd have them up and down the sign. Yeah. yeah. I'm all good. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm not in favor, I don't like them, because what's going to happen, you're going to end up with yeah. them everywhere. And then, uh, you know, when you get kicked around the snowstorm, uh, I'm not a sign guy anyway, but I'm not, I'm not in favor. All right, can I have a motion then? ZBA 2282, Roland Seminary First, <coughs> preparatory wreck the sandwich time board on the premise number 541 Washington Street. When do you make a motion to deny the bill? That's the problem. Second. On the, on the motion, can I all in favor? Aye. Aye. Ben and I. We're going to run the next old business. Oh, no, we're going to go back. No business. 24. No business. Okay. It is the uh, for advantage plan to construct a second floor addition. <coughs> The farmer's porch on 9th Cap Street, Clinton. We have to have a representative there. They don't. Name and address for the record. My name is David Nicola. Speak up. David Nicola, 19th Seymour Street. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you. Why don't you explain what you want to do in your home? So it's an eclipsing cape with uh, two bedrooms, a wonderful bathroom, second floor. Keep it in single family now? Yes. Okay. Uh, the front, you gotta you gotta come in. Uh, the front is the crowd chain of the front of the uh um eight feet. Yeah, that's what I have. Eight feet, right? Yep. Yeah. Like that over. The board of any five eight feet closer. It's eight feet closer. It's still twelve feet off the street. I know, and it's like, uh, it's, it's, in terms of, a couple, a couple of those homes. Uh, we didn't build it? No, I'm just representing that. He's young. He's not young. Oh, I thought he was representing that. Representing the other one. Oh. Yeah. Any questions? It's impossible. Yes. No questions. Oh, Brian, any questions? Uh, no, I'm, I'm good. All right. At this point. Right. You're going to have a seat. Is there anyone to speak in favor? First call? Second call? Third call closed? I have a letter here from the uh, ZBA 9 Test UK, case number ZBA 2280. We've reviewed the bus reference project and have no comments. Is there anyone opposed to run the side? Second call? Opposed on the side, third call. Call the pilot hearing close. I like it. I think it's going to make it also very nice. And the front of the main street is what everyone else is. Yeah, yeah. My favorite call. Thank you. Same. 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 Any motion, please? Mr. Chairman, CBA 2286, David Nicola for a variance finding to construct a second floor addition on the farmer's porch on the premise number 9, Tab 3, Quincy, and make a motion to grant the variance. Exactly. One motion. Amen. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Come on. Take no. your back up here, though. <laughs> You're all set. You're all set. Oh, the next one. Yeah, yeah, no, no. The next one's going to be right now, so you can right. stay right up there. Thank you. DBA 2287. David Nicola. Urbana is finding to remove the roof and construct a second floor addition of premises 82 Pontiac Road. You have the floor of the name and address selected. And the you going to have down You're going to have five bedrooms now in that house? Okay, you can't get any of the rooms down Yeah. Well, 
I'm moving one bedroom on the first floor. Right, that's what I want to do. Yes. Make sure it's working. Thank you. Any questions? I have a really small little question. Okay. Can I have a seat? Is there anyone speak in favor? First call. Second call. Third call. Closed. Have another letter here we reviewed the buffer the project and have no comments. Anyone opposed to the side? Anyone opposed to the side? Second call? Third call? Call it by any opposed? That's a football that needs a person. Vote? Yeah, yeah. We've got to put only three. No, we said that office now. Yeah. So I still have to be the soft set. I'll be voting in favor. Anyone else? I'm in favor. In favor. Okay. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, CBA 2287, David Nicola, for a variance finding to remove the roof and construct a second floor addition on the premise of <coughs> Pontiac Road, Quincy, and make a motion to grant the variance finding. Second, anyone? Second. Proposal? Second. Any other All in favor? Aye. 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 Oh, next agenda. Marco Yen for finding to use the building for child care purposes in the premises 282. 282 building below. The applicant and the representative here. Oh, name and address for the record, please. 282 of all buildings for old. Huh? And your name? 2 buildings for old? Your yeah. name? Name and address. Name and address for the record. Marco Yen, he said. I didn't hear him. Yeah. We got a thing here and I was talking. Did you say your name and address again, please? Uh, my name is Marco Young, and then uh, it's for 282 Village Road. Okay, tell us what you want to do. So, we are looking to put a childcare center here. Uh, originally, it was a food pantry, yeah. and we bought building, we want to take care of it. Did you just buy that? We bought buildings. Just recently? Um, 2019. Uh, and how many how many children do you plan on having? Well, um, my regulation is thirty five kids. How many? Well, thirty five sleeping for a kid. For a kid. So we're looking to put in maybe twenty eight. Okay. Kids. What are you doing for parking for the people that work there? Yeah, that's a big concern for us too, because we have people that might be driving, but most of them. Uh, people working with us use them uh, often. So mm -hmm. most of the high schools that we work with, they are local, fancy local, and a lot of them take the bus. So we have a bus stop right outside. It's mm -hmm. uh, 212 Lagoon, and uh, it goes straight from North Princess Station to uh, Princess Avenue. And uh, a lot of us actually bike and walk, mm -hmm. and most of them don't drive. And a lot of us actually, we're looking for things, so we don't really have to drive much. Yeah. Well, ones that do, can you, can you park them off site? Uh, yeah, they're not actually parking out there, I believe. Um, if you look into yeah. um, the park there, mm -hmm. it's probably included with like, most parking out there. And we don't offer it overnight, so most of the people will be leaving around 6 o'clock and the three days. How many people do you plan on avoiding? If you get the max, if we get the max about 28, then we'll probably need about three staff. Oh, okay. Yeah. I have no further questions. You run a child get down now? <coughs> okay. We already have one of our locations, so. Okay. And where is our location? Is it in Quincy or is it in Boston? It's in Quincy. Right. It's about two streets of public Cool. Thank you. I have questions. The, um, your Basic clientele drop off in the morning, pick up in the afternoon? Yes. So the car. Company in, coming out, and our staff members, our policy is basically we have to hand kids, hand kids over to parents with our staff in presence. So, in a way, it smooths um, the whole process. And they make sure kids get in the car, get in the car, and they, they go home. And when they come in, the parents drop them off to us. Of the staff team, and then we pick them up. So, traffic wise, uh, safety wise, it's uh, for the staff process. Short period of time where you have to The presentation is very nice. Are you going to consolidate the other operation into this one? Uh, no, we actually expand into this one. Okay. 
And how many do you have at the other one? 22 units. How many kids? How many kids? How many kids? Oh, you know? Right now, we have about 60. Um, oh. um, Six zero? Six zero. That's a big one. This one. Mm -hmm. uh, no further questions. Thank you. You can have a seat. Thank you. Does anyone want to speak in favor? First call. Second call. Third call. Close. Is there anything to call? We have uh, Hey, I want to hear from a DPW there to review the above reference project and have no comments. For anyone opposed or undecided, please step forward and name an address or record for you. I need a Milano 299 Building Road. I'm opposed to it because, first of all, there's no yard there for children to play. Second of all, there's no windows. There's tiny little windows. They apply. There's no hogging. That's what I'm concerned about. Mm -hmm. It's a very busy street on the corner of Basel mm -hmm. and Billing Road. Mm -hmm. I live on Billing Road. I know where the traffic is. And I have, I've just been widowed, and I have a lot of people coming to visit me. And I know that they're part, going to park in front of my house. I'm right across the street. And I don't need that. And first of all, oh, this is, there's a bus stop there. It's a bus stop. And a hydrant right in front of it. So there's no parking in front of it on Buildings Road. They can't park on Vassal Street. It's a very narrow street. So where are they going to park? That's my question. Did, I'm sorry, because I couldn't hear him say where the parking was going to be. Then no one's going to park there as far as he's concerned because they all drive bicycles and they live in Quincy and they all take the seat. Who, the workers? Yeah. Well, what about the people dropping the children off? They're going to fall up on a car, drop the child off. Very dangerous street, very dangerous no, I wanted to do that. I know, I went down there three times and sat there and walked. You see what the building is. I know exactly. The little hole in the wall. There's no, no yard for the children to play in. Where are they going to play? That's not my problem. Well, you know, I don't think it's safe, first of all, for the children, and I don't think it's safe for anybody else around me in the area. So, you guys would have wanted to move it or whatever, but I don't approve of it. So. I hear you. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Opposed one inside? I have a letter here from uh, someone on Basel Street, the bike field, reading for the record. From uh, Karen Murphy, 117 Vassal Street. Uh, opposed, not conforming to no non conforming use that grandfathers is in. Um, violation of rules is acceptable, then you cannot play favorites, and everyone should be allowed the same privacy. Investment for personal gains of new ownership will invade and disrupt the local community homeowners of their well being of their existence, which is supposed to be protected under the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Commercial use will now improve on the residential existing landscape of transparent way of life as we live now. Population quality control situation will create pressure from both physically and mentally, physically domes and vassal intersections very busy as it stands now. Traffic congestion won't get worse. Traffic details will have to be assigned for safety reasons. A lot of dog walkers walking the beach, a child could get bit on you know, the safety issue. Mentally, the overflow of traffic could be more congested in a small residential area. Is asking too much of the people that live here and drive frequently. Above, Tony Borders went up here. It's here to uphold the community concerns and well being of the residents, which sure are we have met to keep the necessary purpose of zoning restrictions of the property and what to do. Last call. Anyone opposed on the side? Call up out of here and call. You know, they don't have any fears because both of them are kind of worked out. Uh, you know, I drop off and pick up the kids. It takes about probably about 90 seconds to pick up your child. If you fall and you go in there, and when you knock on the door, they're not going to do it for you. So it takes you know, another minute and a half, 90 seconds to pick them up. So I'm going to be voting in favor. I think it's a decent building where, where the kids need a place to go. They have to have a child. 
father of young kids. I'm a many Koreans, if not enough child yet. So I'm in favor. I'm in favor as well. I am as well. I'm a poor. Okay. Can I uh, have a motion, please? Mr. Chairman, ZBA 2291, Marco Yan for finding to use the building for child care purposes on the premise number 282 Billings Road, Quincy, and make a motion to grant the variance. Second. On the motion, stand on all in favor. Aye. 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 Vote. Yes. Vote. Duly noted. Uh, I'm in agreement. <coughs> That's my new word in 2023. Thank you, guys. Thanks. DPA 2296. John Galligan, a variance finance to add a 14 by 19 addition to the existing building to create a walk up, a quick serve ice cream window on the front of snow 120, uh, 1269 C. Which is pop the book works on. Tell me your name and address for the record, please. John Galgan, 40 Crosby Street, Quincy. And why don't you tell us what you wanted to hand up to your plan? Okay. Um, I am the owner of Alpha Fire and Grill. Uh, my family and I also own how many scoops. Um, unfortunately, with changes in the neighborhood, uh, the owner of that land has, you know, seeks to develop, which would remove the business, already has removed the business from that building. Um, you know, this was my wife and I first business in Housenet. Uh, we took it over from a family member. Um, it's definitely something that the neighborhood, you know, has responded to well. Um, I think it's an asset to the neighborhood to have these small businesses down there. Um, with the removal of 1092 C Street, where the business currently stands, um, you know, we've been really trying to come up with an idea of how to keep this in the area um, how many scoops with the name obviously we'd like to keep it in house neck uh, but even just along c street itself we don't find many places that would be able to relocate uh, the storefronts just aren't there like they were before so uh, a plan that we are looking to uh, go with is moving it down to off the hook uh, we have two sides of the building that provide patio space for our customers uh, one side of the building where there is patio space, um, very underused, and it was under a different proposal of doing an outdoor bar down there, um, you know, with neighbor concerns, um, and then also the removal of 1092 C Street, we thought it was best to change our plan here um, and try to get how many scoops down to that location. Um, we are looking to operate the business basically the same way we were operating, a, operating how many scoops when it was open. Um, it's a seasonal business. It has, you know, hours that, re, that are reduced at the beginning and the end of the season. It is open seven days a week. Um, the plan for the exterior is to use, the, we have a large patio space, um, outdoor area, that we would like to construct a 14 by 19 addition off the side of our building. Um, it would be all obviously up to code and permitted, interior finishes, um, weather tight interior finishes, we grew out to all health code standards. Uh, plumbing and electrical would be determined really more by the layout of the equipment. Once we get it in there, we're able to lay that down a little bit better. Um, the reason we're looking to go with this size is behind the counter, how many scoops was a little bit larger than this, but we figured if we remove a couple pieces of equipment, we can really replicate the business that we had going there without having to recreate uh, or remove things um, to make it detrimental to the business. Um, customers would have full access from the sidewalk on C Street. There is existing fencing up in the area already. We would also ask to have uh, a storage off the side of it as a small walk-in freezer, which typically goes for about four feet, maybe by six feet. Um, lighting is already on the exterior of the building. Like I said, fencing is already on the exterior of the building. Uh, waste and pest control is already set up with the existing building being there. All of that would be reviewed as we get closer to hopefully having this business there. If waste collection needs to be stepped up throughout the week for the season of the ice cream shop, then that's not a problem at all. That's just increasing our service with Republic. Um, pest control, we, we use your bug-in pest control. Um, 
and they're doing you know weekly and monthly inspections as is. Um, parking, you know, we feel that this location gives us a better parking situation, a safer area for families to walk up, um, not right on C Street. Um, so parking would be utilized, the maritime parking lot, parking down by the public landing area, um, and also Brookfield if needed, good area down there. Um, we really feel that bringing this business down to this area, like I said, reduces a few safety concerns that we always have with how many scoops, um, where people, how they access the building. I mean, it is still on C Street, but I just feel like it's that much further down that it's not a school area, it's not by the fire station, um, better sidewalk set up, the public landing is right down the street where customers can grab ice cream and walk down there. Uh, we're not asking for any exterior seating right now. We want to utilize this as a walk up, um, quick service window along with the idea of like the Dairy Queen over by the Clover Bridge where it's a walk up service for customers to come up to. Um, again, just something that we've thought really hard about on how to do this and we don't want to lose this business in the area. Um, businesses in Howard Neck are very few and far between right now and this is you know our best and almost only option that we can see out there right now to keep this business going or you know open at all. Questions uh, I have. Is any alcohol going to be served? No alcohol will be served. So this will be completely um, separate from off the hook. Customers from the interior off the hook will not be able to use the side emergency exit. I plan on putting a push bar on that to try to re restrict people from going out that way. They can really gain access only from the front of the building, from the C Street area. So people won't be going in. Uh, they will not be going. So I'm not watching them get an ice cream and coming back in to sit at their table. It's I want to operate this as it's two separate businesses. Okay. Uh, seating out there. Is there going to be any seats? It just come serve and leave. Come serve and leave. Um, right now, I don't think we have any seating out there. Um, you know, we've tossed up the idea of maybe a long defense of having a leaning tabletop or something like that, but no seats. There won't be any seats for people to sit right down and eat. Um, there'll be no roof or anything that we put over this area. We're looking to maybe use some of those like sunshade type awnings, you know, during the season to protect people if they're, you know, walking out there or standing out there trying to eat their ice cream. Yeah, because I know where it was up there it was a tough place. So it was tough. It was, it was popping. I need some hours of operation to be talking about. I know what the other one, the other one was. So it would, it would line right up with um, you know how many scoops operated. Yeah. Um, it would be seven days a week. Yeah. Uh, typically, it's open April through October, end of October. Yeah. Um, most hours would be 2 p.m. to 10 p.m. Once usually we get into the fall season, let's say you know, mid to late September, more towards the last month of operating, we usually reduce hours um, until 8 p.m. And sometimes we also reduce days as well. If we start seeing as we're going down, uh, just a less flow of customer, depending on what the weather's going to be, sometimes we can just go Thursday to Sunday only and really start to reduce what we're offering, um, keep it limited, and get ready to close down at the end of the season. Ten PM. Is that only going to be like uh, June, July, and August? So typically, um, sometime in May. So I'd, I'd say safely May through end of August. Then there are times that again we move back to nine. Then we move back to eight. Um, I mean during the summer months, you know, the sun's really setting at what eight forty-five. You know, something like that. And honestly, it's, it's when you start seeing a lot more flow. I feel like when the sun's out, people are out doing things in their yard, things like that. And then it starts getting docked out is when we start seeing a little bit more flow of customers. Grab an ice cream up and down. Yep, things like that, exactly. Uh, I know you have to have a, there's something here that you have to have a stamp uh, on the next little roach plan, which you'll get before you get a permit if it's worth that. Okay. Uh, there some changes to that over time, and right. he's he's got that right. Right. Uh, Those are my questions. Uh, you know, I know. Uh, I got one other question. Did you give my cell phone number away to anybody? Okay. My phone rang for last month. No. It happened. It was you. 
So I'm saying someone's either spreading my on that definitely. quick little blank. No, definitely not me. And I'm seeing all these uh, numbers. I don't know. I'll try to do all my, you know, advertising and, and promoting right through Facebook. I do encourage them to send emails in, uh, you know, to counselor and the board. I wouldn't give out anyone's phone number. It's all there. Yeah. Someone. That's me. I mean, half the half house neck has your phone number. What are you worried about? Give <laughs> <laughs> the other half. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Right. I, I, I'm sorry. I don't know. I, so, just to confirm, no outside seating right now. No outdoor seating. No. Oh, we never had outdoor seating. What this really has is, um, there was more of a little public park next door to the existing location, so they utilized that. Um, where I hope they utilize the public landing in areas like that to walk down to. If they stand on the open property and eat their ice cream, you know, I mean, it's, it's pretty good sized space out and there. It's super oh, rough numbers, you're not trying to judge the vision or anything like that. It's a rough number, it's like high traffic. What are we talking, 100 people a day, 200? I mean, like rough. It, it's not even, or we even? No, I mean, it's. On average, we're probably less than that. Right. I would say definitely less than that. Yeah. Um, I think it will bring a little bit different of a flow because uh, right. the hook is there. Yeah. Um, but mm. and there's usually a heavier number at a specific time, which is like the seven to eight o'clock time, like the after dinner time. Sure. You know, and then as the night goes on, you kind of you know you get more vocals that trickle in towards the end of the night. Um, but yeah, I mean, I would say if you're going from you know 75 to 100 tickets, seals in night, that's you know those pretty numbers for us. Thank you. Outstanding fees or fines owed to the city? No, they're not. Uh, there was one put out. I have the receipt for that. It was paid the day of the fine that was issued as well. What was that for? Um, we started doing some work on the property. Um, we kind of jumped the gun on the first project we were going for. Um, dropped myself in the foot, stopped everything right away, and tried to kind of regroup and you know take the right approach going back into that outdoor bar area. Uh, which I think, you know, we really have the right approach going forward, except for some neighbor concerns that we couldn't agree on. The one issue I have here is like a question about entertainment. You do, do stuff inside the restaurant? Inside the restaurant, yes. Yeah, the, help in the exterior area, there would be no entertainment no, offered. I'm saying that, you know, that might cause people to linger a bit if the music's there and it's loud or it's entertaining for the Malik crowd. So, I mean, typically our entertainment is Friday and Saturday nights only. Um, you know, 6 o'clock to 9 o'clock, all interior, all inside. We don't open any windows or anything like that. We really try to, it's like solo, maybe duo acoustic, so it's, it's not bands and loud, you know, music that's driving people to the area. I mean, I want to obviously drive customers to the area, but um, I mean, even people sitting on our patio, I would say, on the existing patio that we have, very, music very dull there. And this would be on the opposite side of the building as well. Thank you. You can have a seat. Is there anyone that's opposed? Anyone opposed? First call. Margaret Simone, 1259 C Street. I'm the director of Butter to Off the Hook. I've been at my property for about 30 years. I've owned it for 23 years. I have a nervous wreck, and I honestly cannot read what I want to, so I'm going to have my friends spin on me. Appreciate it. It's too good. We just need your name, too. Sue Boyd, 117 Bayview Bath. I'm on the other side of Off the Hook. Nancy Sullivan, 27 Allerton Street. So Margaret Simone asked me to read her letter. Thank you for the opportunity to address the board concerning the matter of John Galligan's application for a variance construction, the addition of the existing structure on off the hook. I am a letter uh, owner of the property located at 12. 59 Street. I stand in strong opposition to your proposed and use. In fact, I oppose any use of this side of the building as the proposed area is less than 15 feet from my building. Any noise generated with this type of lighting 
will severely impede the peaceful enjoyment of me and my tenants. There has not been a community meeting, no meeting with the abutters to date. The applicant did not send me, did send me a text message back on August 12th. I have included a print out of that text message. Um, she respectfully requests the board to propose this hearing that I be and that I be given a copy of the application, stand plans, and any other submittals yeah. to the review before our hearings are scheduled. Um, there's more to the letter. Right. And who you are now. Want me to read it? Okay. After receiving <clears throat> notice of the hearing, I went to the building inspector's office and requested that the person in charge of the zoning file allow me to view the application and plans filed by John Gallagher for his proposal. I was told there are no documents on file. After a discussion with a friend familiar with the zoning act who told me there must be an application and stamped plan on file, I returned to the zoning person and was told again there was no application. I left my name and phone number in case you found a plan, no meeting, no file, no plan, no application. Please postpone this hearing until I can be given a uh, copy of the application, stamped plans, and any other submittals to review before a hearing is rescheduled. I consulted with an attorney. He was unable to attend tonight. And then there's a timeline of what has taken place up until today. Uh, May 3rd, the addition was built, no permit obtained. May 8th, the building inspector was down uh, at the illegal addition. And made them stop working. August 6, 2022, a stop work order issued by the city of Quincy. Um, show no addition of uh, uh, plans on file at the CPA website. Show no addition of our area, but the addition was built in operation. Uh, and then there were two events that found around the last shower. Event. That's the timeline. So the next one has a um, text message from John to Peggy, and then a response from another from Peggy to John. I'll be reading that. You can read. My concern is just um, trash pickup. I would think there would be a lot more trash um, with napkins and um, the influx of people. Um, and of course, parking. Um. I don't know if you guys received this picture, but one of Peggy's main concerns was there is an addition um, constructed area that is already built. Permit and you're fine for okay. And then I know that um, the first proposal he took off the table. Well, the other question that I had was if there are already seating up there because I know that was one of the points. And um, so there's not there is seating up there, right? So if there is seating up there now, it will be removed. All removed, okay. And then the other thing was, um, just to give people a wider lens of the uh, visual perspective, there used to be 20 foot high bushes there, so that created a buffer her property within the um the constructed area and now those have been removed and there's a fence there so obviously um the fence isn't 20 feet high but that also doesn't create as how high is that fence i'm trying to think is it like eight feet it's probably um, the thing is is i'd like to have this postponed please and, and what reason I, I i have never seen the plans or any of that i've been to the um 55 c street numerous times i had um, but you know the, plan, the plans are exactly what you're looking at, right? If that's food, they're going to build a right. place for an ice. The noise, the rats. But that has nothing to do with that has nothing to do with what's going to happen. What we're here for? Can he build it or can he build? It? That's what we're here for. I, I, and that's I, the, I that was the part. Like and you're for. I, I understand. I understand. I've been on my property for 30 years. Right. And, and right. now it's my time, and right. I, I, I have to listen to everything. I mean, they had plenty of issues. Do you live that. upstairs in that? I do not live upstairs, but I intend on living there. What I, I just, I just asked the question I because I've never seen you there. Right. Well, right. that is still my property. I, I know it's a business property. Right. right. Exactly. And I am off of small businesses, right. but not outdoors. There's no outdoors down there, and there shouldn't be. I mean, everyone deserves their peace and quiet. Right. 
and this is just not right. Um, everything that I've been through, you I've shut off your phone. I've been to phone numerous meetings. Here. I've missed numerous days at work. Um, the the thing is, is that I mean, you're gonna have children running around. He had a lot of issues up at um, how many scoops with the back um, out sitting out in the back with the, the kids playing the noise. Some uh, arguments with the the uh, woman that lived next door on the driveway. Um, he had vandalizing, um, he had trouble with the um, the outdoor speakers, the noise, um, I guess they cut their speakers. So I don't want his problems to become my problems. I just want to live peacefully mm -hmm. and I deserve that. Mm -hmm. And I am all for John and I have always supported him. I've had cancer walks and everything there for 30 years. I've been there through three owners. Right. And it's a safety issue. I can't go back out of my driveway. There's going to be kids running around and there absolutely will be. And who wants to put uh, I don't care if it's it's still on the same property, an uh, ice cream parlor with the bar, and it is a bar, and I know it's a restaurant, but it's also a bar where alcohol is served, where children are going to be. I am so upset about this. I don't know what to say. I mean, well, you can't get in the building from the ice cream. You walk in there and you walk out. The only just thing like on that side a, Just like was, it was a building by itself. Right, That's the only that thing on that side of the property was the seven foot, 20 foot trees, and also just the emergency exit only right. that is it right. and that's all that should be i should be able to live peacefully mm -hmm. i don't want to have to hear all that he's already moved the dumpster he got away with selling his his um the uh parking lot that was never supposed to be split i never was opposed to that and then they the board approved it i never thought that would where happen. was it behind it on, on, on no, the three pieces of property. When I purchased my property, those three pieces were supposed to stay together: the house, the bar, and the prop and the parking lot. Correct. They, right. Correct. So they got to split it. So now the right. dumpster that was eventually, well, that was over there, got moved to the north side of the building, which was fine. There was never an issue with myself right. or the boys, the other abutters. Now he has it up over my side, the back, the back of the building. So the smell, the rats, and just everything. Like my, oh, you should be able to enjoy yourself. We're all there. We're, we're there for the summer. So why isn't it picked up more then? If there's anything of smell, why isn't it picked up more? I don't know. I don't. I, I don't think. That's I should why have we to have, have counselors that. here. Right. I've is been. This thing stinks. Okay. Well, I've been to up. the um, the health department numerous times. They said that they would help with the smell and everything. I shouldn't have to have the dumpster over my side. It was never there. He never got permission to move it from that side over to my side. I mean, I just want to live happily here. I don't want to have to deal with all this, and I shouldn't. Mm -hmm. I've worked my. I've worked. Overnights, I holidays agree. without my family, like Everybody no. Does. Everybody yeah. Did that. Right. Right. Yeah, I get it. I get it. I would like to have see if we could postpone this. Yeah, I'm not going to ask for personally. Four other members. I think this came up. It's in front of us. I don't see the reason for postponement unless the council has anything. to say. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you. Uh, I have uh, that is one, two, uh, three, four letter cups of course, and two, that's me getting. Could I say one more thing? Sure, Could I have um, all of that read into um, the um, right. record, please? Everything's going to be in the book. Thank you. Yeah. I gave, I gave her my coffee the court. Yeah. I'm still my coffee. No way to get it. Uh, and it's four letters. Is there anyone else opposed or undecided? Second call. Last call. Third call. Closed. Hey, we'll let it hear from the uh, DPW, 1269 KCD, 22 96 about reference project and have no comments. Council, you're up. Dave McCarthy, 48 Whitney Road, Board One Council. Uh, the first thing, and I'm very familiar with Peggy and, and John and, and the situation. Uh, John uh, made a, a point that the building is being changed where uh, how many scoops is so. Uh, the window option is the option for house neck or their ice cream shop goes goes away. Uh, I know that there was a letter that uh, 
Commissioner Duca had put out. And I just wanted to be, you know, clear that uh, Mr. Galligan had met, a little confusion on my part, had met everything that was asked from Jay before he left in regards to fines. I think Mr. Kim will talk about fines, except it was everything. I talked to Mr. Duca today about this because that's what I heard. It was still an outstanding fine. Uh, not true. Okay. Uh, the fine was paid. The only thing that he had is not a stamp drawn. His drawing isn't stamped. He had to change it that he did when he put on the uh, freezer in the back. That has to. So, Mr. Uh, Brian LaRoche, Mr. LaRoche has to sign. So, we don't have that yet? No, that's the only. But that he gets out when he gets his permit. As long as he said it's drawn to scale. So, so everything that's in front of you right now on a typical zoning evening is intact? That we need. That you need. Right. Okay. Um, it's a business B area that I know that you folks and I have chatted about business B down there all the time right. and trying to keep the commercial component. At right. the same time, I worry about it a little bit because... Right. People want to do different things down there with, yep. with the business B and, and make big things, which I don't want to happen down in House Neck. The how many scoops location, in my opinion, was a tough location all the time. I think it and it seemed to work. I know that he had um, the seating in the back and he had some issues. And I know John had made adjustments and those issues seemed to go away. They might flare up once in a while because of where he was at in regards to um, that corner spot, which was the greatest. We're talking about an ice cream window, really, when it all comes down to it. I, I know and I, I understand um, the abundance situation. Um, there's other locations in the city that went to patios, that went to bars, outdoor bars, outdoor eating areas, etc. I can reel them off. Uh, he went away from that whole bar scenario, which we knew was going to be a little iffy because it was tight. I think, uh, in, in my opinion, that the walk-up window would work. I would support the walk-up window um, with no seating. I would talk to um, uh, the health um, commissioner about the dumpster. I know that the dumpster got moved. I don't know if that got legitimately moved or that's something that would have to come back to you folks. I want to make sure yep. in regards to what um, the abundant head said right. that everything, the I's are dotted and the T's are crossed and everything's done, or I would say should be postponed until everything's done, everything's looked at. I think John is done. He enclosed that dumpster. I was down there many times trying to take a look at it. And again, it's a walk-up window for ice cream. Um, Mr. Riddell had mentioned how many people, and I think depending on a hot day or a cold day or whatever down there, it goes up and down. It'll probably be increased a little bit, in my opinion, to because of our restaurant. Um, yeah, come on, Brad. It's a good thing to have in that area. Just like when we deal with things out of the peninsula and swarm, they need, as we talked about, keeping that business component, commercial component in the building where how many scoops is. They, they'll, they, every day, seem to lose a little bit more down the house neck um, from what we had years ago when there were variety stores everywhere. So, you know, so I look at it at one more, one more negative thing if they lose that, that, that ice cream component, which I thought was a pretty good idea to have a window and be able to have a meal, have an ice cream, there's plenty of parking, and um, you know, enjoy the public land and accept to take a walk. So we get the new building going in there too, which is going to bring you know. Oh, there we will. But but again, yeah. I understand it. But yeah. we, I have other places where a few places in my ward where patios went in with bar rooms and were closer than this, and I go back and forth, and this is an ice cream window. Not a bar, so I uh, I hope it can all be worked out peacefully. I think it's a, a very good option for House Neck and for the kids down there. And um, 
Again, it, it, it dwindles in, in the commercial component down there. This would just be one less thing that they have down there because um, there isn't any options really. And it'd be very good for the for the folks at House Neck to, to have this option. They can all walk through it if they want, or they can they can drive down. So I just want to make sure um, when Peggy talked about postponing that everything we have is what we're supposed to have and because I knew there was there was a, um, a question on that mm -hmm. so that's what I did today that's what I thought I thought we we're going to postpone it and said fine it's still all uh, the fine for the fine right. and again that's I'm going to leave it up to the board yeah. I, 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 I understand both sides yeah. um, and um, um, you know uh, moves have been made by the applicant to try to lessen the activity down there from the bar scene to the ice cream scene mm -hmm. and um uh, i just want to make sure everything is legit and paid for and done before we move forward thank you thank you is there anyone else you can favor yes. Good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Kelly Gallagher. I'm uh, on 25 Turner Street. I am one of the original people that um, started on these groups in 2015. Um, I can speak to two things this night. I have some sentimental reasons to speak to you, but I think everybody's on the same page as far as wanting how many groups to stay. Um, I can also speak to you more importantly, I think tonight, because I actually rent a spot that is directly next to the area in question. I have a street for big business on the bottom floor of Peggy's building. Um, I have been there about almost four years. I keep my windows open because I need to, because I have heat and fumes um, all day while I'm working there. I have never once had an order. I have never once seen a rat. <laughs> um, I, the fence that is there, I think I, I could be off, is probably about the same height as the trees that some were living and some were dead, which is, I think, the reason why they came out in the first place. Um, I speak often to the actual tenants that live upstairs. Um, I did ask them about company scoops, but We've talked over the years about events over and off the hook and comings and goings. They have nothing but good things to say about the things they have seen, the crowd, the noise, the, how everything is handled. Um, you know, so I understand Peggy's concerns. Going back to the fact that I used to run the these groups, I can tell you um, we generated enough trash to fill two trash barrels a week. There's approximately a half a bag of trash that would go out and we didn't even actually have a dumpster because we couldn't get a dumpster down the back. Um, and they two trash barrels in the pile of recycling um, that goes out every week. It's still the same, maybe a little more because it's a little busier than when I was there. Um, but they're not going to be generating, you know, dozens of bags of trash a day. Um, as far as the location, um, when Scott McCallum and I opened How Many Scoops in 2015, we looked high and low in housing. <laughs> there were more places then, way less places now, and there weren't good pickings then. So, Joe's options or anybody's options to have an existing little family business in House Neck are pretty slim to none. Um, I think this plan is a good plan knowing the inner workings of how the ice cream shop runs. I've seen John's, you know, floor plan. It will fit everything that they do now. Um, when we first opened back in 2015, we did have 10 seats in Hummy Scoops. That went away because of COVID, and it proved to us that we didn't really need them. That operation 
at 1092 C, or I still call it 1094 because it's a double, but has been operating pretty much as a walk up window since COVID. Um, the complaints that uh, Peggy spoke about as far as the tenants um, only came when we put those seats outside because of COVID. There is a parking lot back there and an easement for the people that own the houses next door, which is really where the problem came from. Um, Peggy spoke of vandalism. Um, anybody that vandalized the area, I can't really speak to. I mean, if a person comes out of an establishment and does something on their own, it's not like the people that work there were vandalizing anything. Um, so, both places, I mean, how many scoops was run for years with no issues, clean. Um, you know, you can go back and ask the health department. They never had a single issue. Um, John currently at Off the Hook runs a clean establishment. <coughs> I don't think, besides the issues that have been raised because of the, you know, freestanding building that he didn't get the permit for, that definitely raised issues as far as that is concerned. His business has not had any issues. No noise complaints, no, you know, out of control patrons, no sanitary violations, none of that exists. Um, the issues that Peggy is speaking of are because, yes, John built that little shed to hopefully put a bar out there and, you know, definitely took a few steps that he shouldn't have. He has fixed that situation and I don't think that this should be judged on that one mistake. This can be a very, you know, nice business for the neighborhood. It has, it's a, since 2015, it has really become a community favorite for people, not just in housing, they come down. They, you know, so I would hate for the kids to lose it. I would hate for the adults to lose it. Everybody likes ice cream. Um, and, you know, one more thing over the years, um, and I know John continues to do this, but how many scoops were started um, to give back to the community, but countless, countless things that have been donated, countless, countless jobs that have been given to neighborhood kids. Um, First dates, first kisses, like you name it, um, first ice creams. Um, it's a big deal. If this is not approved, there is no other. Like it, it, you can look up and down C Street. Good luck. If you're going to find a place, you certainly can't afford it running an ice cream shop. So, um, you know, I respectfully request that everybody just kind of doesn't postpone, makes a decision. Hey, thank you. Thank you for your time. Anyone else? I got one. That's a fly tonight. I know. I was going to try not to speak for 2023, but I couldn't do it. Couldn't last a day. Do you want to remember 362 Grand Mall Road? I first want to disclose that I do like ice cream. And, um, you know, I just want to say that this is kind of a win win because um, this is way better than having an outdoor bar next to someone's house. Um, this is something where maybe someone's going to the bar and they don't drink. Now that person can go get an ice cream. So um, I just want to say that I'm in favor of this and I look forward to two scoops of black raspberry and sugar. Thank you. Thank you, John. And yeah. the record. Hi, I am Mara. What number? 66 dollars. Um, just had just like to clarify two things. Mm -hmm. Not so much in favor, not in favor, okay? But I, I was sort of under this step in the box. So that portion you be better outside. That's no one. No, right. No one. Right. Okay. And so the end. No, no, no. So the building of this new 14 foot patio. We didn't know. We're going to build it off the building. Off oh, the building. The building that's here, we're going to build it in the back. Build it in the back. Uh, and I'll guarantee the part that's half built is probably part of it. I know the last So um, I haven't stated again, separate to walk out. And no seats. No seats. Um, and so that area. 
can or cannot in the future be used with seats for an activity, you know, for, for renting for activity, or is that just not even? See, that that going right it's going to be nice scoop. Oh, thank you. Oh, yeah. So that's fair. How many scoops? Sure. That's fine. That's basically it. That's fine. And then my only last question is concern. Because I drive that many times a day now, so my mom's in back. Fix it up. The traffic? Where is the parking going to be? Is it I just don't know. Is it going to, you know, we all went inside and the buses? That's my only concern. If I have trouble with elevate, we shouldn't probably be driving stuff. And then ambulance is that often we don't. So I'm just wondering. 90% of the people are guaranteed they went off the hook walk I agree. I live not. I, I watch it. I go up there. I watch the traffic. Right. What was going on? Me, I live up top of the hill. I'm too lazy to walk. So right. I drive and park on, on the side street. So those are just drive. Oh, no, there's parking. It's parking down by the pier. It's parking down in Fens Mill. It's parking in, in the winter time. All that whole trail park. That's the I got a warning. I got a warning back in the trail park. Huh? I got a warning in the trail park. Well, in them. boating season you do because you're probably in a double trail work where they put trailers. But they don't have parking. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just bring it up. So that's really all I just wanted to. Uh, what's the What's up to Davis? Yeah. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Call it probably here in Boulder. Just one last quick question. Sure. Steve Stone, 215 Winthrop. I'm not opposed to this at all, but I want to ask something about the park. That's what I wanted to know yeah. about. You know, it comes summertime. It's ice cream. People want to drive down there get an ice cream, which is fine. But now you get all the trailers parking, get the bar parking, ice cream. The yacht club's going to have stuff going on there. Yeah? <clears throat> We're going to park all the cars. I say we get rid of all the boats. Don't let you know shut the ramp down. Or I'm stop mowing down the you know all the buildings there, and just making the walk park instead of putting in. Maritime centers and all this other stuff. We need parking down here. So I think you should think about that. That's all in the states. All right, John. Steve? Yep. Thank you. Now it's done. Now it's done. We have two four letters in it. Yeah, you have four letters on the point of four. I four letters on one point in time. Yeah, we'll You can come up while I'm written again. Christine Cody, 297 C Street, Quincy. I'd like to express, express my support. Family's a long time supporter of both off the hook and how many scoops. I think the proposal is a great one. The location is more accessible and has more parking than Friday. Uh, Todd and Rachel O'Donoghue, 853 C Street. Wanted to extend our support to create a walk up quick service ice cream window. Business provided many excellent pro products and service to the house of that community. And we'd love to continue to have how many scoops service our Greenfield neighborhood. Uh, Jennifer Billard. 299 Elwood Ave. Just like to express my support for John Galligan and his request for how many scoops has been the location. I've, I've frequented uh, the location over the years and I've noticed how popular it is with the locals and Powell's Next. Uh, there aren't any other small business ice cream shops in the area, uh, so I've worked John and off the hook for almost a year now. I say they truly care not only about the customers but the neighborhood. It's courteous of all events and Courteous and all of its events have been with the intention of bringing people together and have them respectful. I can't think of a better way for our neighborhood kids to celebrate summer than to stop by how many scoops for an ice cream after taking a dip in the ocean. I sincerely hope you'll approve. Uh, and then Jill Hockney of 938 C Street uh, expressed support. Uh, I'll ask the community that encourages people supporting neighbors and helping each other when we can. When I was sick a few years ago and I'm able to leave my house, I had how many scoops. I had called how many scoops to see if I could pay over the phone and have someone pick up my okay. order. Shortly after I received a message from the order that was my order was at the doorstep. The owner had delivered it to my door. This is how it meant. My husband works nights and called how many scoops late one night. It was after Sunday the shop had closed. But the owner was there and answered the phone and asked him to come down and get a nice cream. Even though it already closed. This is how it's meant. Bob the Hook has been a successful keeping our community engaged with one another and continue to provide a safe and local place for residents to get something to eat as well as providing many jobs to people. Family-owned restaurants looking at, to add more ways to 
serving its community by reopening comedy schools. I express my full support. Thank you. Name and address, Laura, to put. Helen Mann is Ernest and Mayor now. Um, resident of Housenet for 14 years. Um, I worked summer with John at how many students have to develop for how clean it is. Um, no problems with patrons. We never had any trouble with the kids coming in and out. I also have three kids that love how many scoops. It's a bartering tool in the summer. You get an ice cream, you clean the room. Um, my 12 year old is hoping it reopens so he can get a job in a couple of years. We have a dog that enjoys the pup cups. Um, we walk. I think a lot of people are worried about parking, but even as an employee there, more people often than not walked. Um, so I don't think parking, parking would be an issue at all. I don't see, we go to Alton Hook um, as a family to eat. I can see us going next door and getting an ice cream. I don't understand the bar having an issue. I think people that if you go to drink, you're not going to be able to get the vanilla ice cream either. But I think those are two separate entities and it can walk out the window. So I just wanted to come and give my support tonight. Thank you. Well, we're probably hearing folks screwed. Now, I understand what you're coming from, but I also understand that that, that business is not even down. 90% of the people, I'd say 95% of the people probably walk uh, and pick up their ice creams. And it's, it's not going to be a parking problem. It's not going to be a parking problem because of because they're going to have a scoop of an ice cream. Uh, and for everything else that, that John's done in business, and how can you run the shop and help people put out things? Uh, I'd just like you guys to think of that too. He's a, he's, a, he's a great guy to have in the house next to one of these business. Uh, we just lost a couple of stores already. We have, we have John's place, and, and we got uh, Bernie's store. And you got a <coughs> got a bar. That's all that's left now. That's it. Two bars, a restaurant, well, a bar restaurant, a bar. And uh, Bernie's place, we can go get milk and bread, whatever else you need to stock. It's nothing else down there. And it's a it's a big community. It needs it. It really does. It's a big employee joint. We need that in house now. And part of that part of that whole thing of the family life. The family life is going out together, getting a nice thing with your kids or your grandmother or your mother or your whatever. You're going out, sit down, talking ten minutes, fifteen minutes, put an ice cream in your hand, you start gap. That's what it's all about. So I'm gonna be voting. I just have, uh, Mr. Gallon, I just have one question, just from my own. Can I bring you here? Oh, of course. So, we're trying to figure out, is this going to be the ice cream window? Um, Marty was saying it's going to go off the bat. I don't have it gone. Yeah, it's so the sugar condensate on the back of Marty. Hold on. Yeah. Okay. So, this, yeah, basically what you are looking at here um, was the potential bar area. Right which probably goes about half of that. So I'm extending it to the corner of the building, squaring that all off. It doesn't come out any further on this side here. Where's the window? And the window would be the same setup. The window would be right here on this front side here. So yeah, go, it's a, not about double in size, maybe a little bit less than that. Uh, and then they gain access from the front of the building, walking straight up into this fence. And that's about, as I see from the opening. From building the fence, yeah, from building the fence, it's probably about, I think, 16 feet to building the property line. It might be about 17 or 18. Right. Yeah, it's already mostly constructed during the emergency exit that was there, so we just extend that up to the window. Yeah, um, I have to commit, like, probably 30 pounds of something to mm -hmm. the ice cream. But, uh, yeah, I, I, how like this has to have it, having it down here, the longer it's even better. Since all the gathering problems, birthday parties, that type of nonsense, and health. Uh, and I think it's very good. Kaya, go for it. Kaya, Kaya. I'm here to deliver it. Scroll, Brian. I'll be your favorite. Have a good time. Welcome. 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 The premise number 1269 C Street, Slingsy, and then come on to the grant the variance by the second. The motion, stand that all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So moved.
Thank you. Thank you, John. And you're keeping it busy. Thank you, John. Thank you. Thank you. That's a very good one tonight. DBA 2298, anti fest story for variants to renovate in a finished basement to create six units from the premise of 60 foot total. So, yep, thing here. Jamie's not here, let me take a five minute break. <laughs> Twenty two ninety eight. Anthony Pastori. Anthony Pastori. Here. Last call. Bias. Wait, twenty fourth, or you want to move it, or you want to wait? And that's two. No, 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 no. This is. No, no, this is no. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's not. Yeah. You want to go to the twenty fourth? February 21st. February 21st. All right. ZBA 2298. Anthony Pastori for a variance planning to renovate the unfinished basement and create a six unit on the premise number 64 Thoreau Road, Quincy. Make a motion to move to February 21st. Second. I will not be here. Oh, that's why. Yeah. On the motion, stand on all in favor? Aye. Aye. Hold some more. Julian. Special permit to operate a lot of family daycare in the premise number 147. Bay Street. Captain, interrupt you. Name and address the record, please. Julian. Um, Madam Chair, Julian. Julian. Oh, I'm applying for a uh, special permit for uh, now because we take it at my uh, uh, 147 uh, BS3. We don't care, that's a capacity of uh, 20 children. Uh, I have been there uh, for nine years. Nine years you've been uh, in place now? The Brown House? Yeah. Oh, yes. Brown House. Okay. Yes, Brown House. Uh, I have two uh, relationship with my neighbors. I don't have any uh, this issue uh, with none. Uh, I you also have one? Uh, I don't have any party issue. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, I also have to go with relationship with my parents. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that I have to parents take care of the kids, so they can go to work. They can go to job training. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you've been there nine years. You've been yeah, doing yes, this for yes. nine years there? Yes. Okay. Without incident, right? No incident. No incident. <laughs> no complaints. No, no complaints. How many, how many children? Uh, no, I have nine children. Nine? And you have ten. And your wife? Yeah, yeah. I met, um, my wife's on capacity is ten. Okay. Thank you. You're really large capacity, aren't you? Or you can have a seat. Is there anyone who wants to speak in favor? First call. Second call. Third call closed. They are letting here from the DPW review, review, review the above project and have no comments. Is there anyone opposed on the side on this project? First call. Second call. Third call. You know, she's been in nine years. She's been running the favor. And one stage lately, and now a change, but we can't get a lot of licenses. Hey, okay. is that good? I don't know. Somebody on the ball. Is there a motion? <laughs> ZBA 2299, Julian, for a special permit to operate a large family daycare on the premise number 147 Fayette Street, Quincy, and make a motion to grant the special permit. So, all those in favor. On the motion? I spoke up. In favor. Yeah. All in favor? Uh, yes. Aye. 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 Oh. Yep. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Uh, for the record, my name is Evan Fleming. I'm here on behalf of the people of Avon. Uh, as we indicated, the property that we're discussing tonight is 107 and 111 Cross Street, West Bowie. Uh, Cross Street runs from uh, Quarry Street all the way across down to the first foot parkway and then across uh, Freddie Park Parkway to the, towards the highway. Uh, this is the end of uh, Cross Street as it approaches the highway. Um, this property is a 12,314 square foot parcel. It's located in a business D zoning district, also within the flood plain district. Um, and the property right now um, is two large, large homes. Show them the existing uh, land as well. No, it's okay. um, that actually, sorry, that is actually, yeah, that, um, Shows showing the oh this is the uh, yeah, yeah sorry no that's all right. I just call it another book. Yeah. 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 Um, the existing site plan shows the existing uh, properties on the site and interestingly if you if you look and match it up with the proposed <coughs> the changes are not that dramatic as far as site uh, um, is site uh, coverage is is uh, controlled. Um, the existing single, the existing properties are a large two-family shed and, and other uh, structures in the rear, and then there's a large single-family. Both of those homes, existing homes, are actually not floodplain compliant. They have, they have, they have, um, their first floor level is well within the floodplain district. And as you may be aware, the city has actually proposed a, a, a pump station in the rear. Uh, years ago, and I don't know if, if, if how many of you were here, but I permitted a six-unit uh, building on the other street, on the opposite side of the of the um, of the pump station site, uh, and that's been built since. Uh, this is a, a proposal that we think fits better in the neighborhood in a, in a townhouse-style development as opposed to an apartment-style development, where because this uh, street is essentially uh, smaller, single-family and two-family uh, properties. Uh, so what's being proposed tonight is to remove the two existing structures, construct five new townhouse-style units. We'll have one egress from uh, Cross Street into the site. There'll be parking under for two cars for each unit. Yeah. And we've provided two spaces. Actually, this has been redesigned a little bit. There's one space here and one space on that side. And while we were discussing this with the planning board, because we went through the site plan review with the planning board, um, uh, questions were raised or issues were raised by the community both in the number of units that were proposed which was initially seven then reduced to six and now reduced to five and also discussions uh, were raised about setback the building was initially set back only about five feet from the property line now has been pushed back to eight feet we think it's a great new use of the property these are all floodplain compliant units um, They'll provide new housing units within the community. They'll all be privately owned, like many of the homes in the neighborhood. Um, some of the neighbors uh, expressed concerns about this, and we believe that we've addressed all of those concerns as we went through the planning for process. Mm -hmm. What we're seeking tonight is a flat plane special permit. A special permit to allow the conversion from business to residential, and also variances. And those variances primarily deal with the setback the unusual shape of this parcel creates uh, a setback issue here, and also we have setbacks issues in the front um, and, uh, and in the rear of the site here as well. Um, and also, this is uh, this would typically require a 14,000 square foot uh, parcel. This is a 12,314 square foot parcel. Uh, not, uh, however, uh, they're actually providing more square feet per. Uh, unit than is required by the ordinance. The ordinance requires 2,000 square feet per unit, providing about 2,300 square feet. So I think it's a great proposal, and we'd ask that the uh, board support this. Pat's here from uh, the Selper. Uh, if there's any questions about the drainage, but we believe that we would appropriately address drainage. In fact, one of the things that Mr. Um, Lab has uh, provided was an easement across the site to allow the city to, to access the, the pump station in the rear. And that was done at, with no consideration. That was done just to, as, a, as, a, as a friendly neighborhood. It's a 20 foot, right? 20 foot Right. Um, I'm looking at the five and looking at Isn't there just one more house at the end of that street, right? There is. Yeah. And uh, this is the five. 
Well, Pop was here tonight, uh, Jim Devine, and uh, he uh, he's also expressed support of this proposal. He's, he, uh, Mr. Devine, also raised concerns about the number, and that's why we reduced it from six to five. But his home is, is to the left of those homes on this side. I have no question. Okay. So me, the way you guys position them there, kind of forward fronting from the lot, right. and also a little bit set left, I assume that was done with the most consideration for elevation and flood issues is that the reason it was and and uh and what we did just we we, we just redesigned the front of the of the homes to provide for a porch okay. in the front and a doorway so it appears to be the front of the unit yeah. however the units will likely be accessed through the garage right. in, the, in, that, in that manner yeah so i saw you nodding there is that correct is that yeah yeah pat we're going to sell work so uh yeah, yeah so we had to the main reason for that was drainage, uh, two drainage uh, basins sort of like to the right and to the rear. Okay. Um, right now, there's essentially no drainage. None, right? Yeah. 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 It's a long back yeah. It can be. It can be. And I think, I think obviously, that's why we want to elevate these buildings. I, I don't know how those uh, existing structures did during the heavy rainstorms, but I would imagine they had some. Well, yeah. probably not, right? They probably had some flooding issues. So this will dramatically improve their Listen, as Pat can tell you, this flood. Um, uh, controls to allow flooded water to pass in through the garages. Any impact on the proposed? I mean, I know it's been talked about now for five years. I don't know we purchased it long ago, seven maybe, maybe even longer. Uh, any issues these buildings will impact on on what we're trying to do? Would no, not have any on impact on the, on the yeah. pump station? I, I'm, I'm not sure exactly what the status of the pump station is, whether it's Someone could actually go move forward with it, but they certainly control that site. But no, it won't have any impact on that. And we had, you know, as you know, through the planning board process, we had peer review engineers review cats yeah. and, and DeSelbrooks um, drain and controls, and um, never raised any concerns about that. Okay, thank you. Did the easement not affect that drainage operation? Of the no, it's right of it. No, so that would be an underground. Um, the proposed drainage that they're, they're doing in the lot behind it would be. Some type of underground pipe, um, and we took that into consideration with the basin. Thank you. That should come off the, the brook, right? Uh, that's what they're probably their plan was. Is that why you're giving them that easement? Is that yeah, because I believe they're putting a pump station from my understanding. Yeah, behind so the brook it. would be, yeah. And then I, my understanding, reading the report from um, the company that did it for the, the city, is then diverting that up or down street. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Create more issues. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone here that wants to speak in favor? Uh, okay. My name is uh, James Devine. I live at 117 Brown Street. I'm going to speak in favor, but I have a couple questions too. Can I ask a question? Yeah, I can. Uh, one of my neighbors may ask a question. I'll ask you when I assume you want yeah. to. Uh, there is a uh, catch basin on the street. I think they were going to do. Are they going to do the sidewalks? Are they do that? Right. They are going to do the sidewalks. So under the sidewalks, uh, in front of the building, there is one very old catch basin that one of my neighbors asked about, and uh, he just wanted to make sure that it was addressed and properly connected and drained. Uh, my impression is that it's an extremely old one and it may have never really drained properly so we're not exposed to the water um, but ideally you're going to be digging up anyway so we run under that so we just want to make sure that it's addressed uh, yeah i'm sorry about that yes yeah. uh yeah so thank you for bringing that up so that's located right here kind of where the driveway right, entrance right. is yep. uh it's currently a gutter inlet so you kind of see it it's weird it. yeah, it has yeah. A, yeah it's an old one yeah, yeah. so what we're going to do is obviously remove that we remove the uh, curving and where are we? right here and do something like this. Strong catch basin. Yeah. yeah, so before it was probably, it's kind of all one structure and it's yeah. about, we believe it's like a leaching uh, exactly. structure. Well, I don't know if it's connected. Yeah, we don't think it is. As far as we can tell, it is not. Right. It, it just leaches there. So that'll be part. We, we are addressing it. Um, there'll be a new catch basin instead of the curb. Yeah. Okay. Gutter inlet, it'll be kind of like a standard catch basin. Right. And it'll be routed to that same structure okay. um, and 
how they played out in the process. Excellent. Uh, all right, that's good. And then as far as uh, the permits have uh, pump station, mm -hmm. uh, don't quote me, but as far as I know, um, we've already received a, uh, we're now necessarily, we haven't received this, we need more funding because of <coughs> COVID stuff. But to the best of my knowledge, everything's drawn up and uh, we have um, somebody, I think under contract possibly, that's already, um, that we chose. Well, but, so anyways, uh, they really worked hard with us. They did come with too many in the beginning. They worked with us. We we're really happy with the fact that they did um, add the front stuff so it makes it look a little bit more appealing from the street. And uh, I really like the way the planning board also worked. So uh, it was really nice to be able to work together mm -hmm. and find a happy medium. Mr. Fleming, you know, we all came together in uh, the Latins. Uh, it was good, and that's the way it should work. We should be able to talk, come to a, a joint idea, and make sure everybody's happy and we all get what we want. So, um, good to hear. Yeah, no, and, and really, in the, in the planning board, um, one of the gentlemen, he scolded somebody else for doing that, not working with the uh, people in the neighbors, which I was happy to hear him scold them also. Because, that's not right either. So, uh, good job, everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Ice cream later. <laughs> I love ice cream. Can't you tell? <laughs> Is there anyone else who wants to speak in favor? Second call, third call, followed by a hearing call. I have a letter here from the GBW 107 111 across Cross Street, GBA 2219 that we reviewed. Provided comments for this project to the planning board. All the comments were provided and been addressed properly. We do not have any other further comments from the Board of Appeals at this time. Is there anyone opposed or undecided? Opposed or undecided? Did your homework first. Yeah. First call. Yeah. Second call. Like four months. <laughs> Third call. All yeah. well, I'll hear you calls. I'll be going to the panel. I'm in favor. Absolutely. Black lines. Okay, I have a motion. Chairman, CBA 22 yeah, 100. Peter Lab for a special permit variance and special permit floodplain. Demolish the existing single family homes and construct five new townhouse style homes on the premise number 107 and 111 Cross Street. Plenty can make a motion to grant the special permit variance and special permit floodplain. Aye. Motion to stand in all in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. Hold on. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Further on the tank. Thank you for your compliment. GBA 22103. Brendan Lombard for various findings to connect in the long gate, the dominance on the right side of the roof, reading habitable master bedroom suite in the premises number 117 Dimmick. How are you? Hi. I'm Last time you were here, we had stuff in the basement. Stuff in the now we're dealing just with dorms, correct? Correct. Uh, okay, um, tell us what you want to do up there. Well, my husband and I have been in the for almost 30 years, and we're going to another 30 years. We raised our three children here in this diverse and vibrant city. We've always been active contributing to the city, things like coaching, soccer, teaching CCD, delivering meals on the wheels, singing to the Crimson Girl Society, and more. This is our community. We're rooted here and we want to stay here. President Hill neighborhood is ideally and due to the train only a couple miles from our grandchildren. This wasn't really a business decision at all. We were on the watch for years for a suitable house in the neighborhood and paid full price in 2018. The plan has always been to rent for a period of time before moving into, our, into it ourselves. This has been a thoughtful, respectful process. We installed new siding and historically after studies. We built the weed plot lawn, waiting with neighbors to remove overgrown trees, and nurture and neglect the plants and add new ones. We and our town have such a possible addition to the neighborhood. The house at 117 Bennett Street has fine bones. We love it. As you know, it's 100 years old, and we want to maintain its character and be right by the house, the neighborhood, and for ourselves. We're looking forward to downsizing without downgrading. We want to age in place without having to worry about aging funding. 
heating and electric, deteriorating plaster, and to be able to have the comfort and convenience of air conditioning, quick insulation, an elevator, modern bathrooms, and a master bedroom. To that end, we have worked with our architect to change the exterior of the building as little as possible. The only changes we are asking for tonight involve the side of the house that is virtually hidden from anyone's views by trees that are nearly the same age as the house. We did address concerning bedroom age. We are not changing the number of bedrooms in the house. This, is, this house is in residence A, and we respect and, we, and support keeping residence A zones intact. This house was built as a two family before there was zoning of any kind. We don't wish to create anything about it. We really don't. We just want to live there in comfort. Our neighbors have been very supportive, and we all feel our innovation ideas represent the net benefit to the neighborhood, neighborhood and the city. I, or our architect, Pat uh, Fisher, who is here with me tonight, will be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Thank you. We have uh, letters of support from the neighborhood association and from our and three of our abutting neighbors. So just to refresh my memory, just because. Mm -hmm. So, I think the last time were we trying to oh. add in the, no, the elevator still equipped, right? So the elevator will still be existing. We're still fixing the egress to the second story. Is that, Everything is and then we just got, I think, get some dwelling space on the third, on the, in the basement. basement. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? And we, we just removed that. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I think it's not the storage for one unit, unit one, unit two. Right. Right. Okay. Yeah. Please, uh, this one here, I need to put the budget. Okay. Again, do you want to pull now? Yeah. Yeah, we'll see. Fred, if one favor, we're going to read letters that we got from the neighborhood. This one's from William O'Brien, 109 Monroe Road, Quincy. Uh, in favor, as this project abuts mine, I've discussed the issues with the owners and I would support the changes as they are presented. Please call me if you have any questions. Phyllis and Steve Fair, 115 Monroe Road, uh, we're writing regarding a zoning variance side uh, to convert livable space in the existing to family residence at 117 Dimmick, as shown in the plan they've submitted. Margaret and Brendan have addressed any questions we have, and we have no concerns about the project. We appreciate the time that Margaret and Brendan have taken to discuss their proposal with us, and look forward to many years as friendly next door neighbors in this beautiful neighborhood. Mark Cole, Quebec, 84 Glendale Road. Um, we are butters of the property. We have seen the plans for upgrading the one and pandemic, and would like to go on the record with the board. And being in full support of such changes, we do hope the board will find in favor of the applicants. And then the uh, Hospital Home Neighborhood Association. Um, last October, at the invitation of the House uh, Hospital Hill Neighborhood Association, Margaret and Brendan Lombard provided answers to questions about their proposed project. While we do not speak for individual butters. No concerns were expressed by neighbors at that meeting initially. Additionally, no concerns have been expressed during the current proposal before the DBA. We appreciate the time Margaret and Brendan have taken to address the proposal with our Hospital Hill Neighbor Association neighbors. And that's from Ted Mulrain, 101 Monroe Road. That's right. Sorry. Theory of science is to be determined by owner. Have you come up with an idea yet? Deciding? Yeah. It's going to be blue. Continue the weather. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not, I mean, it's just the back, right? That you have the back inside. The back inside, yeah. Thank you. Is there anyone else wants to speak here? Very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Chuck Phelan, uh, Wood 5 City Council Law. I'm just here to speak in favor. Um, I was called on it after the last meeting. I went back, redid the design, and uh, and then I met again with all the neighbors, contacted me, and met with the Hospital Hill Association, and they they find very out of your way, they're great neighbors. And um, I realize it's rather than say area, but it is a hundred year old building that was built before zoning is the camera. So um, I respectfully ask the board to consider this and uh, 
with this request. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else to speak in favor? Kevin Mulray, 101 Monroe. Uh, thank you for reading the letter from the uh, Neighborhood Association. Wanted to uh, speak personally in support. Um, I think that's a, a perfectly reasonable uh, proposal, um, keeping the neighborhood. Yes, it's a res A district. I appreciate the board's uh, defense of res A in general, but I think this is a uh, perfectly uh, appropriate uh, proposal for an existing two family. Um, my, my perspective, having a owner occupied, a renovated two family is a lot better than one that's uh, rented and remains unrented. So. Thank you. Thank you. For anyone else, last call? All the final hearing closed at alert of the We have reviewed the middle of the above reference project and have no comments. Anyone opposed to the size? John? Yeah. Uh, John Orfield, 62 Bramwell Road. When I was just doing research while everyone else was talking, right now on apartments.com, 117 Demick Street. Two bedrooms, two parking spaces. So it's kind of like this is for rentals and that's going to make be made like a third rental that they can have on the third floor so this is the residential a area and i don't see how this is much different than the proposal that we voted against before this you know it's the parking issue in that area on dimmick street you don't want people parking right on dimmick and you don't want you know having two family and two rental units is is already more than what a single family of residential A people have. So just for that reason, like I don't really think there should be multi units in the residential A area. So I'm against it. What? There's two units in that house. Yeah, they'd probably rent on the first floor. There's two and units in that house. They're making theirs the third floor with with the with massive the suite yeah, up there. Second and third. Two families there. It's all stable. Okay. okay. I see. Right. Not three. For anyone else, all joining the side, I'll have a hearing close. How are you going in the It's a beautiful building. I think I think I appreciate your time to come back and, and I know you were a little frustrated about our situation and, and, and I appreciate that consideration that you put in and continue to put in and I, I thank you for, for taking the time to do that and I think you're probably going to be beautiful I hope you change the place like you want. By such a property. <laughs> He's got a little house too, you know. <laughs> General Brian's comments. Nice job. Uh, CBA 22-103, Margaret and Brendan Lombard for a band signed to connect and elongate the dormers on the right side of the roof to create a habitable master bedroom on the premise number 117 Desert Street. Quite the I make a motion to grant the variance Second. On a motion. Stand on all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So moved. Thank you. Last thing on the agenda tonight. Four. 456 Avenue Street. Filling building for a special permit to operate short term rental on the premise number 456. And. Hi, everyone. My name is Daniel. I'm the owner of 456 Avenue Street. So I want to apply the lighthouse, uh, apply for the Airbnb use. Mm -hmm. Do you currently use it as Airbnb now, or did you in the past? Or is this a, did you do it before we had the new regulations? Did you use it as Airbnb? Uh, no. No. Okay. Well, I just stopped from the uh, uh, couple, I think, a uh, few, few months ago. And then I just received the warning. And then I know that I need to uh, right. find out the land. Yeah. yeah. Last time we were in your property, didn't you want to put in an office or a rental in there? No. So it never came before? Just, just, just bought the house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you just bought the house. Yeah, bought the house. Yeah, yeah, right. Those are the people before you. Yeah. They were here not so long ago. Okay. I just went there again and I'm saying, if I you want to put an office in here, his name, was, his name was Old Hamlet. No, I didn't know who it was. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
So I think the uh, Airbnb is the best place for me to start one side. I can, I can take in my time. And then uh, on the other. Okay. Yeah, on the other. Uh, on the other hand, I can just take time to Thank you. You have all the paperwork? I haven't seen it. Oh, all right. Should be all right. Can I, can I ask a question? Yeah. Is there a difference between a short term rental and an Airbnb or is it the same? Same thing. Same thing. Just, just a different enjoy it, bro. <clears throat> Oh, okay. And so he has to occupy the same. Anything on the 30 days, I believe, correct? Right. 30 days is And he has to look there. Yes. Okay. Yeah, he's got to look there. Okay. Yep. And it can't be done in residence A. Huh? And it can't be done in residence A. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yes. Yeah, and actually, it's in the zoning people. Yeah, no, me and y'all also. You can have a seat. I have Thank no question. Does anyone want to, uh, you guys all set? Question? Uh, is there anyone want to speak in favor? First call? Second call. Third call. Oh, I'm probably hearing polls. A letter here from the DPW. We review the about Rockland's project and have no comments. Anyone at polls were inside? They're up. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. My name is Rodney Eccobucci. I reside at 430 Abbey Street. And um, I would respectfully request that the board deny this special permit for the short-term rental. Uh, I have lived in this city for over 60 years. Uh, I've been a resident uh, at uh, this address, 430 Adams Street, for over 30 years. That's the kind of stability you want to see in your neighborhood. Um, approving this particular special permit would set a dangerous precedent, I believe. So on behalf of nothing personal, I guess, my new neighbor, mm -hmm. but um, on behalf of uh, I rented the residence uh, in my neighborhood. Um, I would respectfully request that you deny this particular permit this time. Thank you. Thank you. Since the uh, new ordinance went in, we're getting more and more of these every 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 week. And if they do what they're supposed to do, we have to have a good reason. Next, anyone else want to speak, Jim? Yeah. Uh, my name is uh, James Blair. I'm right on the bottom. Uh, it, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's legal in the area, it's you right. can approve it in the area, and how far is that, um, is it right on the cuff of the property where the cuff of is it, or is it right in the uh, uh, so, I mean, up the street, I guess, is resident, yeah, yeah a little bit. Yeah, a couple hours. Jeunesse, once you get over to like Jeunesse. Yeah, 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 so like, uh, I know the area, Jeunesse and uh, Hilltop and all those areas, some really nice houses up there. Um, I'm actually really amazed that uh, there's not more people here. I don't know if they know about it, uh, if they want to own them, or if somebody paid attention. But uh, I feel that the uh, same way that maybe setting a uh, precedent. Uh, it's, if I lived in that area, I might not want uh, an Airbnb right on next to my house. Um, so I, I'm only I'm not completely informed on it. So I'm just saying. I that think. I think. When they sign this into law for the city, it's it's instead of a long-term rental, you can have a short-term rental, but yeah. not in zone A where it's single-family housing. Sure. So if there's two and three units, if you live in the house, you can do it. If you don't yeah. live in the house, you can't do it. Which means they did it to say that only oh, occupied is going to watch his house and see who he lets in. Yeah, I even when someone even working, let yeah. just a rental in there so he gets money and he don't live there and he don't yeah. care. That's why I think they were thinking, yeah. but they said it's okay to do it in, in Red Speed. Okay. The, the other thing is the city is a washdog because they, there's like six departments that look at these things I do. and I monitor them. It's, it's, it's not like it's just there. Right. Right. Sure. The health department, the fire yeah. department, the police Also, Fallon just told me that today. He said that it is uh, very much monitored. And, exactly. yeah, yeah. So, and uh, if he has problems in his place, his license is right to Okay. Yeah. Uh, it, it gives them before nobody knew who was when. Sure. At least yeah. this we know the dogs are There's one right across my street and how's that? Yeah. Up, up up in the hill. 
right here. What the hell are you doing up here? Yeah, I understand. And, 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 and I look and I see a different car and I find out it's, it's on the Airbnb. I said, hey, dude, stop. Yeah. Stop. Excellent. So I'll defer to you guys. I just wanted to yeah. get up and say that little piece because, like I said, I'm right. completely burst on it, but I did want to just um, yeah. mostly on the side of it, I guess is what I'm saying. Uh, but uh, you explained it very well and a few other things that I've heard. So, uh, Hopefully it stays quieter. Well, I'm still up in the air in myself, but, but yeah. because it does, it's, it's, it's kind of scary. You really got to watch. That's yeah. got to be watched because yeah. the quick the channel, so right? Uh, some of the houses, the sober houses, and things like that, that you're having issues on. Right. Going that road, you can't know. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You can't do anything about that, man. <laughs> Knowledge, but you know, it's still an issue. I know. It takes well, I get a bunch it. of people to make it if it's bad. Yeah. Here's, right. here's what I'll say if you look at the map, it's, it's a super unique little section of Red and Bean. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. It's, I mean, it's probably, it probably yeah. consists of 15 yeah. properties total. Yeah. Uh, I, saw the area. I know the area, and that's what I was saying. I'm like, oh, yeah. most of the other houses. So right then, out of it. what's uh, weird is so. what's weird is where we Spots where we where we did this where we read society's map obviously with the condos you know <laughs> Jason or you know to his property almost yeah. there uh, sure is perfectly fine yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. the gentleman's over there nothing against you uh, yeah, the, just with trying the, to make sure that everybody oh yeah, where they carved out because those were already existing or yeah. something like that they should have never we, we have plenty of neighborhoods where we haven't carved anything out where it's just like that one you just saw just before here like there's yeah. plenty of multi-families on hospital hill but we kept it res yeah. you know it's just weird that there's this little carve out so. there's a lot of little funny things like that yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it makes your job much harder and i know you guys try and bring everything in so uh city once again city and software yeah. That's great. It's be watched. Yeah, 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 yeah. So great job. Anyways, thank you everyone. You guys once again are doing a great job. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you a lot. Uh, great. I have some logic. Yeah, it's go ahead. Logic. I don't know about logic. Well, you can add logic. Hey, um, hey, come on. When you do look at that, that map, there's only like about eight houses on that yeah. side of the street. They're like behind each other. So it's basically like the purpose of the zoning board is you can, you know, you know our zoning map is messed up where this place where it doesn't yep. make sense. This is like an area where it is residential A. Everything on Gray Street, everything on the other side, all residential A, residential A all the way up. You don't really get any residential B until you get up into the hospital hill area. So this, you know, I'm, I'm concerned it has a very small driveway. If you look at all the, you know, map geo pictures, this is one of the only houses. If I looked at the 2021 picture, the 2019 picture, the 2017 picture, um, the, all the pictures that I looked at, for some reason they took off the 2000, the 19, like 70 picture, but you go back to 1998, on five or six of them, that there was a car in front of that house. So if there's Airbnb, I hate cars, you know, I live on Grunwald Road and I hate coming down um, Common Street, taking that right, it makes it hard to see and it makes it hard to drive and um, Mr. Um, Ikebuchi's house where he is, he is in residential A. So it's, it's like where that line is, it's kind of like that weird building that's on the corner, they kind of redid the zoning just for that house and, and went across the street, those other two things. So, this is they, they made that rule so let's say if this was residential a they couldn't do it so but it doesn't mean that everybody in every house in residential b has the right to do airbnb they still have it still has to make sense and i don't think this one does make sense so that's my logic why you should say no thank you thank you john is there anyone else want to speak no far against anything no have a letter here from the dpw Review this bill and drop our project and have no comment. Uh, no one wants to speak, so you know, I mean, it's in these own and I'm paying taxes and got a right, I guess, and just monitor it. I don't, I don't like where it is either. I don't like, I just don't like where it is. It's like that curve. It's funny, there is five in front of the truck, there really is. But, I haven't voted against one and I won't vote against this one. 
I'm going to vote against this one. I, I don't like it where it says we need the income. We are setting a bad precedent. Secondly, the driveway is really small. It is. So I'll be voting against it. I think. Once again, somebody comes in here with an income problem. If you have an income problem when you bought it, or it well, how, how did that exist? You've only owned it for eight months. Uh, I'm voting no. I'd like to have the scrutiny and be able to watch from <laughs> and the neighbors that get concerned in these neighborhoods and that's what I prefer to do it as opposed to have them unregulated and just run it. Yeah. That's that's my my point. I'll be voting Can I have a motion please? ST R twenty two ten Queen Ling Zhao for a special permit to operate a short term rental on seven six hundred four six Adam Street. Twenty. I make a motion to grant the special permit. Second. Second. Motion. Amen. All in favor? Aye. Aye. No. Opposed? Opposed. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to the Second. All in favor? Aye. Still voice. 